Hey guys, it's Victoria. I'm just very annoyed right now because I was literally getting to the end of, you know, doing my review and for some reason, some way, somehow, I clicked something and it stopped the whole thing. And I just figured I'll just start off with a whole new video then to try to figure out how to add to that. Like, I'm not that tech savvy. I'm tech savvy, but I'm not that tech sav savvy. So... I'm just going to do this whole thing again. So hopefully I'll have less edits and I could just go through this swiftly and it could be one, two, three. So this is VH, VH1's Couples Retreat, season one, episode two called Ring of Fire. All right. So we picked up where we left off from last episode with Ray J running off saying F this couple's retreat, even though it's not really F this couple's retreat because you're still here. Uh, Mike and Raymond run after Ray J. Ray J threats, threatens that he can say a lot about Princess, which I feel like a lot of people use that as a threat when it's just really, what are you going to tell us? Like, you fake, I feel like anyone who says that is fake, you talking about, oh, I can say so much about such and such, Yes, I'm pretty sure a lot of people could say about a lot of other people. Okay, do we really care? No, because at this point, Ray J, you and Princess are just there to collect a check. You guys are just there to create drama, just to make it interesting. But is it really interesting? To me, it's not interesting and it's annoying. So you threatening that you say a lot about Princess, can you? Because at this point, you guys put so much of your own personal business out in the open that I really feel like... is. <laughs> It's not that interesting. We don't care. And if it was something that we didn't know, I feel like we'll still be like, okay, and moving on. Next. Princess is still crying. Um, and saying that they're only staying together because of the kids. How, how many times people are going to use that as an excuse? I can understand, yeah, you want the kids to be raised in a two-parent household, but what's the point if... The parents are not getting along and you guys really just causing more turmoil for the kids than growing them up in two different households where it's just peace. Like, I'm not a parent, so I can't, you know, personally speak on that. But in my personal opinion and seeing so many couples, so many different relationships and families where it's not working living together to the point where people, you know, couples are living in separate rooms and it's just... It doesn't make sense, okay? Me personally, I mean, my parents are back together, but they did split up. And before they split up, when we were living in the household, it wasn't a good, it wasn't a good environment. It was a hostile environment because they would argue. So in my personal opinion, I'm like, what? how is that helping the kids that you're staying together? Like, wh how is that an excuse? Oh, I'm staying together for the kids when... You're probably the way, especially the way Ray J and Princess be arguing. That's not helping the kids. That's, and if anything, that's just showing them what not to do. But that's not helping them grow up in a nice, peaceful environment. That's just growing them up in a hostile environment. And they could be, you know, traumatized by that. So him using that as an excuse. I mean, sorry, Princess using that as an excuse. Total BS. She's just trying to say that just to gain sympathy. Like I said, both Ray J and Princess, they're just trying to, you know, do things for entertainment at this point. So over them. Moving on. Next. So in the meantime, while Ray J and Princess and all of them are, you know, doing their little whole dramatic cry works, angry works, uh, everybody else is pretty much sitting, well, not sitting, standing, uh, talking, you know, just hee hee, ga ga, whatever. Mendeecees asks Rada, you know, about the threesomes thing. And then in the confessional, he's asking Andy, like, oh, would you ever do, you know, a threesome or whatnot? And then she's just like, absolutely not. And I'm just like, why does every guy ask this question? <sighs> every guy asks this question. And it's just like, oh, it's only when it's two girls and a guy, but you would never do two guys and a girl. So if you are not willing to do two guys and a girl, because that's what it is, then why, you know, would you want her to do two girls and one guy? So you could feel like you could live out your 
preteen fantasy of like, oh yeah, I'm that nigga because, you know, I got two girls, you know, all over me. We doing the thing in the bedroom or wherever you guys are at. Like, no. And for the most part, a lot of females are just like, no. Just like most, if not all men would be like, no, for two guys and a girl, then please understand that females don't want to have two girls and a guy, let alone probably not two, even two guys and a girl. For me, I'm a jealous type of person. I don't want nobody, okay? no, I'm the only one, okay? The only one. The one and only. You know, Delicious talking about, you know, she wore different wigs and stuff. No, this, this, this is what you, I am the only one, okay? So, this whole threesome thing, you know, right on mic, you know, hey, do you. But, like Andy said, absolutely not. So, Mendes is, I think he was just trying to, you know, bring up something else just to make it the mood more lighter. So, I'll give him that, but no, absolutely not. So, the couples play a game called Stuck. And I actually liked the game. I thought it was pretty nice. I thought it was pretty decent. That was that would be a game that I would want to play personally. Don't know if my husband would be down. But me personally, I would, I would be down to play that game. Um, Not much to say. I don't have all the questions that AJ asked. But they were good questions. I thought, like I said, I thought the game was cool. Um, after the game, all the couples go to their rooms. We go to Kirk and Rashida. Kirk is talking about, oh, he, feel bad. he feels bad for all the couples. And it's like... Are we, you know, you are you giving me the, you know, we're the veterans vibe again. And it's just like, Rashida's looking at him like, why? Like, we got our own issues too. Like, he's the one, he's the one stepping, taking a step when AJ is asking questions about like infidelity and, and whatnot. But Rashida stayed back. She's stuck. So I guess Kirk feels like, oh, I feel bad for all the other couples because like he feels like he overcame all those obstacles and instances. So he doesn't feel stuck, but Rashida feels stuck. And I feel like, Kirk, you shouldn't feel be you shouldn't be feeling bad for all the other couples when your wife still feels stuck on certain issues. So like you're overlooking that whole part. Like you're trash for that. That's that's trash. And that's that's the issue I have with Kirk is like you feel like, oh, you know, since you're good, is everything is good. When it's like, if your wife still has issues, why are you not acknowledging that? Like you saw you stepped forward by yourself. So why wouldn't that have in your head like, oh, oh, dang, like that's still an issue. Like we need to talk about this. But no, they don't talk. People don't talk. People don't never communicate. So that's a frustrating thing. Like I'm, I'm getting frustrated because it's just like, I'm not no relationship expert, but I've watched so many things. It's like I can get a gist of like, okay, I can recognize what the issue is here. Ray J, oh, not Ray J, Kirk and Rashida, y'all just need to communicate. Like Kirk, if you feel like you good, but your wife ain't good, then you ain't good because your relationship ain't good. So, Kirk, get it together. So, throughout the whole episode, um, I guess every couple sitting with each other going over questions on, you know, cue cards, uh, talking about, you know, what's the first sign that you saw they fell in love with you or vice versa you know along those lines like good feel questions that you know can help a couple to reconnect so it wasn't just one specific scene it was throughout the whole episode so you know i thought it was very cute you know that's you know something that does help people reconnect so you know you've seen people laughing some of the couples laughing and whatnot so i thought that was pretty cute so i just wanted to make that little mention like all right you know at least it's not all about drama you know it, it is a little Feel good moments in the ep in the episode. Hopefully, we'll get more of that throughout the whole season. So, so Yandy and Delicious and Raymond and Mendices talk. Yandy and Delicious sit, you know, are at the pool talking while Raymond and Mendices are at the fire pit talking. Pretty much, you know, connecting how they have like similarities with their, you know, relationships as you know, Mendices and Raymond both, you know, were incarcerated as. You know, Yandy held it down and Delicious, you know, both of, actually both of the females are, you know, still dealing with that, the effects of that to this day. You know, they're talking about, you know, like Yandy mentioned, Mendeecees would wake up in the middle of the night, just like probably having PTSD. And, you know, she has to ask this, like, are you good? And, you know, Delicious and Yandy feel like, you know, is it them? Like they have a lot of questions that they still feel like are unanswered because, you know, they can't really relate with them because, you know, it's a whole 
you know, it's a whole situation being behind bars, you know, for a good amount of time. We're not talking about like six months or, you know, ha- you know, I was about to say half a year. When is that? When is that six months? But, you know, for like a short period of time, though, they've been, you know, behind bars for years. So uh, Mendeecees and Raymond also, you know, kind of connect on that point. And Mendeecees mentions to us that, you know, when he was behind bars, you know, pretty much he was uh, gaining resentment for again from... He was gaining resentment um, for Yandy because, you know, she's still living her best life. And what made him really feel, like, upset was because you're living your best life, but you can't even take the time. Like, you're so busy, you can't even take the time to call or send an email. Well, he mentioned email. You can't even email. Now, I don't know what the situation is. I know they go into it later on uh, when they sit down with AJ and them. But, you know, if that was the case, I think that is messed up on Yandy's part. Like... Like, once again, I understand people be busy. Excuse me. But I don't feel like you could ever be too busy to make a phone call, to set aside some time for your significant other. Plus, you guys just got married. Like, you were were newlyweds, Yandy, at that point. Like, right after you guys came. You made mention that after you guys got married. So sorry, I'm shaking my laptop. But after you guys got married, that he went straight to jail. And I'm just like... I get it. You you have things you got going on to, you know, make sure your kids eating and all that stuff. But at the same time, like and I'm just saying this as an if she's she wasn't reaching out. That's messed up because you couldn't take 5 minutes out your day to send him an email or take some time out of your day to, you know, make a quick phone call. Cuz at the end of the day, I'm pre- that's all he had to go off of. That's all he had to probably keep him going cuz I know a lot of people not a lot, but I know quite a few people like that's, that's what, you know, has them like, okay, you know, I, you know, just 365 more days, just 365 more days, you know? So that's, like I said, that's if she's not, but I feel like she did, but probably just not to the extent that he wanted it. Like if she was going days without it, then it's like, I don't know. Like, I just don't know the situation, but if that's the case, if, I mean, if he felt that way, I hope he communicated that with his wife because, like I said, people don't know how to communicate. So if he said that to her, then I wonder what her response is. But if she, if he didn't, then how is she gonna know? And you know, in the time you were behind bars, by the by the point you did talk to her again, did you mention, hey, you know, I haven't heard from you a few days. I haven't heard from you in a few days. Like, what's going on? You know, I I love to hear your voice and you know stuff like that. Like, make her feel good or whatever. But if you never mentioned that, how is she supposed to know? She, then you're just going to keep getting a call or email every few days if you're not mentioning it. Like, this is why we're talking about communication, guys. It's all about communication. <sighs> so, AJ sets up this seance thing with all these fire sticks and, like, I agree with what Delicious said. <laughs> I had to pause because I'm just like... Uh, I mean, it didn't look it didn't look creepy, but it did look kind of like look like you making a whole dramatic scene right now. Like I understand, it's, we about to get deep up in here, but she made a whole dramatic scene with all the fire sticks, tiki stick, whatever you want to call them. Okay, seance. Okay, seance. Like uh, Delicious said, yeah. I mean, it looked kind of devilish up in here, and um, I think even Ray J said some said something too about it. But I was just like. Yeah, this is this this is looking a little dramatic, uh, not in a good way. So I guess Ray J comes over first by himself to talk with AJ one on one. I think she asked him to come, but then she mentioned that he wanted to speak with her one on one. I don't know what the case was, but they came. Okay, Ray J came by himself, sat down with AJ. AJ trying to talk to him, you know, trying to get deep, trying to see what's going on. He's man- making mentions of, you know. He just feels like, you know, everybody's on Princess' side. Pretty much he said, I'm the one who found out about the divorce on social media from Princess. And in my head, I'm just like, y'all both probably did it. Like, stop making this all about Princess. Like, Ray J, like, you're not, you're no better. Okay, you're not perfect, you know. Princess did it. Ray J, you probably did it, like, too. Like, if that's what she's saying, that's probably what it is. Because now you're saying the same thing with her. So, whatever 
Okay, how are you gonna move forward from this? Like that's what I wanna ask. Like, okay. How are you gonna move forward from this then? Like you get mad at all the stuff she said. Like you, you know, you got mad with her for saying you, you guys don't have sex, which y'all don't. Now you mad at her for saying she found about the found out about the divorce from social media. And now you're saying you found about her, her when she divorced you first from social media. So Okay. You upset about that. Did you talk to her about that? Probably not. Again, communication. You probably didn't talk to her about, about that. You probably didn't express like, come on, that's messed up. But in, in, in return, you just do the same thing to her that she did to you. That, you, you know, allegedly, whatever. Like, like I said, Ray J and Princess, like, I feel like their issues are not minim, minimal, but I just feel like they make they take something that probably if they just communicate about it, it wouldn't be a big issue. But they're both immature, so it these issues that I felt like could have been easily resolved just turns into these big dramatic blowouts because they're both immature and they just rather go back and forth instead of really sit down and talk about it. So pretty much I can't go word for word of what the conversation was with AJ and Ray J, but pretty much, you know, she's telling him truth. She's, you know, she's giving to him real. So then he's just like, oh no, sorry, reverse. See, I keep skipping ahead of myself. So pretty much AJ makes a mention or says, so why are you with her? So then Ray J is like, see, thank you. Thank you. He gets up. He's like putting his hand out like, see, thank you. Yes, yes. Shake my hand. Thank you. And it's just like, no, Ray J, that's your is, is really going over it. That's not what she's trying to say, bro. Like she's trying to go deep with you. Like she's literally asking you. So what is your reasoning for still being with Princess? Not saying like you shouldn't be with her. She's legit asking you a question. But of course, he's not trying to hear that. He tries to leave. She's like, no, I need you to sit down. I want to talk to you. So, you know, eventually he sits down. So, like I said, they go back and forth. And, you know, she's keeping it real with him. She's telling him the truth. So then he gets frustrated. He's like, see, now you acting or talking like princess. And she says, you know, am I talking like princess or are you just having a hard time, you know, hearing the truth? So, of course, once it goes to that, that's when he shuts down. Then he pulls a freaking Chris move, Chris from Married at First Sight. Pulls out his phone and just like, okay, I'm done with this conversation. So then he just on his phone, like, you know, like I said, like I, I feel like, like him and Chris, like they don't, they're not really on their phones. They're just like trying to do something to like look as if they're preoccupied. And it's just like, how immature? Like how old is Ray J? Like I don't even know how old Ray J is, but you acting hella immature for like. Something that you came on the show for. You came on the show to work things out with Princess, right? But then you getting upset when it's not going your way. But it's like, like, do you not have in your mind that maybe she's probably going to talk with Princess also and tell her what she need, like, the truth also? Like, it goes both ways, Ray J. It's not just like, oh, you're in the wrong, but you both do wrong things in the relationship. Like, I don't... Anyway, so he, he's a fed up, he's annoyed, and, you know, he's like, I'm done. He gets up, walks away, you know. Obviously, AJ calls him out for being immature when whatnot, and he's just like, yeah, whatever, da, da, da. And moving forward, when she has everybody sitting down at the seance, <laughs> um, she made mention, you know, I think she made, I think she made mention that Rage is not going to be there, so then... Um, princess in the confession was talking about what probably happened and for the most part she was right because you know significant others they know they know um when you're with someone for a good amount of time you know their characteristics you know their patterns so princess got a down point of what happened what probably happened um so aj goes into a little spiel you know and says if anyone wants to leave you know you're more than welcome to leave princess raises her hand she's like you know i would like to leave you know, AJ respected that. And I I respect that too because it's like like Princess said in the confessionals, like, I didn't come here by myself, but I, and I'm not gonna do these activities by myself, you know, while Ray J is just, you know, being a big baby in his room. So 
I do, you know, I couldn't understand that. And, you know, she left. And I think they're here for the rest of the season. But at this point, like, if you guys both are not willing to, well, I think she's willing, but Ray J's acting hella emotional, hella hormonal, you know, if I do say so myself. So I just feel like if he's not willing to do it, y'all need to leave because y'all just wasting everybody's time. Like, I felt like the whole two episodes been about you guys. Like, it's only this last part when everybody's sitting with each other. The other couples are sitting with each other going through, you know, their personal issues was the only time it's been about other people other than Ray J and Princess. So y'all need to leave. Okay, y'all need to leave. I don't I don't got the that. I don't have the patience. Y'all need to leave. So uh Kirk and Rashida go first. And Kirk makes mention that, oh, I feel I feel stuck, like we stuck at this retreat. So then of course, you know, uh Rashida, you can already start seeing the tears in her eyes. She's just like, Oh, you feel stuck at this retreat. And, you know, AJ and uh Rashida are kind of just like, Why do you feel like you stuck? You know, and then that's when <laughs> um, in the confessionals, like, you know, they're asking about the infidelity because, you know, he took a step forward for infidelity and Rashida stayed where she was at when they was playing the stuck game. And Kirk was like over it, you know, all the, you know, infidelity questions, especially in the confessional. And as much I wouldn't like to agree with Kirk, but I can understand. Whew, hold on. Sorry, guys. But I can understand why he would feel annoyed by it. Because, like, he, in his mind, I feel like, in Kirk's mind, how long ago was that issue? Like, it was literally seasons ago for Love and Hip Hop. Was it seasons ago? At this point, it was about a year or two ago. I don't know. Seasons ago. I'm going to say seasons. Correct me if I'm wrong. Seasons ago. So he's at the point where he's just probably like, you know what? It is what it is. We're moving forward. She forgave me. We're still together. Why y'all still asking me about this? So that's probably why he's just like, I'm tired of talking about this. But at the same time, right? I mean, Kirk, you on the show. You know they probably won't ask you about it. So this is one of the stipulations, prerequisites, whatever you want to call it, on the syllabus of something you got to talk about in order to get your check at the end of the season, you know? So, you know, it is what it is. He doesn't want to talk about it. I can understand by the same time you are on couples retreat. So it is going to be mentioned because you guys are not the veterans and you guys are not the life coach. So therefore we're going to talk about y'all issues. And if Rashida didn't step forward, obviously that's still an issue for her. So yes, we got to talk about it. So then he goes until explaining how they, at the time or for a period of time, they weren't good. It was to the point, you know, they weren't even intimate. Like he would try to be intimate with her and she wouldn't, she would, wouldn't be having it. And I agree with what Rashida made the mention of, yeah, but that doesn't give you an excuse to cheat, which it doesn't. Um, but Rashida did, you know, admit that at that time she wasn't feeling herself. I think she mentioned postpartum. Um, and, you know, she just had a lot of things going on and she didn't feel like being intimate. She wasn't in the mood to be intimate, which is also understandable. But here goes, but here I go back to the word communication. Did you guys discuss that with each other? Rashida, did you say, you know, hey, babe, sorry, I've been distant or sorry, I haven't been wanting to be intimate you know, I just, there's just a lot of things going on right now. I just really don't feel like myself. Like, I feel like I'm having postpartum, da, 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 da. Did you say that? Did you talk with that to Kirk? And Kirk, did you be like, you know, hey, babe, like, what's going on? You know, I, you know, it's, it's been two, three months and, you know, I've been trying to, you know, connect with you. I've been trying to be intimate with you and, you know, you just been pushing me away you know, and I feel like you don't want me no more. Like what's going on? You know, talk to me. Kirk, did you say that? Like it, it goes back to communication. Like if I could put, um, if I can put a summary of the issues so far, communication, all couples across the board, because it's like, yes, Everyone has issues. I get that. But 
if you're not communicating them, then you're just gonna keep it in, keep it in until you blow up. Like everybody says, everyone has had said this before. And it's like, I'm not no relationship expert. Like, you know, I just got married six, seven months ago. So I'm not no relationship expert by any means. But at the same time, did I say six, seven months? Oh, my husband gonna kill me. Oh Lord, it was a six, seven months. December, we got married in December. So you do the math. I'm, I'm not good with math. Anyway, uh, this is not about me. But I'm not no relationship expert, but at the same time, from watching so many different things that deals with couples and reading so many books, it's like I can I can recognize or identify simple issues that I feel like could easily be resolved based off communication. So when Kirk is saying, you know, he doesn't feel like, you know, she she wanted him. And then Rashida was like, yeah, I doesn't give you an excuse. But yeah, I, I didn't feel good at the time. I didn't want to do nothing. I didn't feel like myself. Y'all didn't communicate with that with each other about that. Because, you know, obviously, I feel like you telling us and AJ and all the people, all the other couples, is the first time each other person is hearing that. So it's just like, why didn't you say that at the time? Like, you probably wouldn't even be here had y'all communicated. Half the couples, if not all, wouldn't be here if they just communicated. So I just feel like y'all just need to work things out. AJ says, where can we go from here? Um, Kirk doesn't know. <laughs> He's just like, you know, it, you know, especially with the having, spending time together, even though they're busy. Like, he's just kind of still like, mm -hmm. I'm going to move on. Rodan might go next. AJ makes mention. I'm sorry. I'm just like, I'm getting, like, talking about this, I'm just like, dang, these these couples just, y'all just need to talk. Like, y'all just need to be honest with each other. Communication and honesty is key. <laughs> oh, gosh. Like, fudge. Sickle sticks. So, like I said, Rodan might go next. AJ says, you know, if you got if you talk about something so much, then it probably bothers you. So I guess she cracked the the walnut. She cracked the walnut with Rada, and I guess the whole female thing bothers Rada. Like she was cool with it in the beginning, but now she's not. Well, I guess she kind of is, but she's kind of not, and. Mike is in the situation or in the mindset like, well, I'm just going to do me. Like, you know, at least I'm open and honest with you about it because, you know, if you didn't want me to do it or what, whatever, you know, I would still be doing it behind your back. You know, he did say he's a cheetah. And I guess she she's saying, like, he's always joking. Like, he can never be serious, even with the shirt, you know, from the first night talking about, oh, I have a cheetah on my back because I'm a cheetah. I mean... You know, she probably thought he was playing. Well, she was probably trying to, you know, make light of the situation. But at the end of the day, I felt like he was being honest. I mean, he made a joke about it, but he's he was being seriously honest about being a cheater. So, I guess, I'm trying to understand Rada. Like, you are okay with the threesomes, but, like, you don't want him to be doing it so much. Like, the free passes. I think the free passes bother her. Because it's like he's effing any and any any and everything on the street, and she don't like that because she can't because you know she wants to approve all these all these females, but he's just do he's just doing him, you know, he's just doing whatever he wants. So I think that's what bothers her because like they are in a relationship, so she wants to approve it and whatnot. But it's like yo, if he's stayed away in different time zones and you sleep. He's probably like, am I supposed to wait till you wake up and, you know, approve the picture of the female that I'm about to F, like, in two minutes? So he's probably just like, no, F that, I'm going to do me. So I don't know. I think, what's that word? Communication. I think they need to talk about what do they want from the, the, from the relationship. I feel like Mike, from the get-go, you know, and I probably think that's from what he's been trying to say from the beginning, like, Oh, that's that's what it was in the beginning. Now you're trying to change it. Like he was cool with it. He probably told you. I feel like he probably told her from the beginning. Like, listen, I mean, this this is what it is. Like, what, you know, 
we went we got into a relationship like that and you know now you're trying to change the situation i'm still cool with the way it was and uh Rodimus mentioned that they separated at a period of time and uh she decided to take him back because she wants to move things forward and i think she said that they just got back together to come on the show or something like that something along those lines so i don't know maybe they're just doing it for a check too but i don't know you know i just feel like they're trying to make up something to have an issue about so they can get that check at the end of the season but i don't know for them is uh sorry i just got a text but for them i'm just still kind of iffy like i said i don't think they're going to work out in the long run because i feel like eventually rada's just going to want uh, a monogam a monogamous exclusive relationship whereas mike is just like nah like i told you from the get-go like we we uh we just having fun like yeah you my girl but i'm what what is that if he's really effing any any and everything out in these streets so what them is like the, i felt like there was no resolution they just they're just gonna do whatever that, that's what i really feel like like i said i just i just feel like they're a filler couple for this season so who knows so then like in my notes i put nothing gets resolved because nothing got resolved so then last couple because we didn't get to delicious and raymond so we'll probably get to them next week um we get to yandy and mendici's um pretty much for the whole situation or the whole time they were sitting across from each other and whatnot. Um Mendices brings up the email situation. Um he <laughs> Okay. Cause I'm trying to I'm trying to remember without looking at the notes. I'm trying to go from, you know, in chronological order. But for the most part, Mendeecee's issue is she didn't feel like she, he didn't feel like Gandhi was there for him in a sort of sense, as far as communication wise, like he, uh, she wouldn't email him and she's just like, oh yes, you know, I did email you or call you or whatever. I probably didn't email you, but I called you. And then Mendeecee's like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. So they kind of have a back and forth, not in a, an aggressive tone, but kind of just like in a hurt tone. Um, this is where Yanny, you know, gets teary eyed and she does cry. And, you know, in the confessional, I think in the confessional, she says, you know, I, you know, was raising, you know, three kids by myself. You know, I was holding it down for you. Um, and running five companies at the same time. I was busy. Da, da, da. And like I said, like I don't know if what Mendici says is true, but if you can't take five minutes out of your time to send an email or to call, then it's like I gotta be with Mendici's on this one. Like, once again, if it's really a priority for you, you will make time. I understand people are busy. Okay. I get it. I know plenty of people who always were busy, like always got something to do. Like I know people who have multiple jobs. I know people who have like a job, they got this hobby, they got kids to raise, they're babysitting. Like I know people who are busy, like who have no time. True, I can't even get, I, I have to freaking schedule to hang out with certain people. And it's just like, I get it, people are busy. But at the same time, if it's really truly a priority, you will make the time. Like Yandy said, you got, she went to jail right after they got married. So newlyweds. So I don't know. I can't say who I believe. But at the same time, I feel like there's some truth to what Mendices is saying. And Yandy's talking about, oh, you know, this is the first time he's bringing this up. And like I said, like the whole, I, I need a, <laughs> I need to figure out how to make words pop up on the screen because communication is what this episode should be called because it's all about communication. Nobody talks to nobody. You don't, nobody talks to their significant other. Clearly it seems like with any of these couples because y'all not communicating what the issue is. 
Mendeecees, you should have said this a long time ago. You've been in jail for how long? You've been out for how long? Now you're bringing up how you felt like, dang, like she really didn't contact me when I was behind bars. Like she did, but like I would see her hanging out, you know, at the club doing this or whatever. And I don't get an email. I don't get a call, da, 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 you know, because, you know, he, they're from New York. So he got that New York swag and accent. So, um, then Yandy, no, before we get to that, he also says, um, I guess he felt some type of way about it cause, or no, listen, I, listen, don't, don't quote me on this. Okay. Cause I'm trying to go off the dome with this, <laughs> but he's, he says something about it's, he didn't make mention of it or he just brushed off his shoulder because he's he has that brush off the shoulder effect because of a tra you know traumatic experience with his mom and obviously if anyone watched the uh, Love and Hip Hop Family reunion you know that pretty much his mom neglected him and his brother when he was younger so um, he already has that like chip on his shoulder kind of like you know what I'm just gonna act like it is what it is it ain't nothing. Um, because of, that's what his mom did to him. So why is he going to feel some type of way when his wife does it to him? I think that's what he was trying to get at. Don't know. Quote me, you know, let me know if I'm wrong. Don't quote me on that. But, um, I think that's what he was trying to say. So then Yandy then asks the question like, oh, if the roles were reversed, you know, would you hold me down? Cause she said she felt offended that he would always be like, oh, you know, see, this is why. I need to look at my notes, but I don't want to look at my notes. I'm trying to be, I'm trying to engage with the camera. <laughs> so pretty much what happened, what had happened was, uh, she's just like, she doesn't like when he'd be saying like, oh, you know, if you want to leave, you can leave. No one's making you stay here because I guess that's, he was feeling some type of way. See, I I'm getting it guys. I'm getting it. I'm getting it. He was feeling like, <laughs> um, See, I just lost it again. He was feeling like some type of way because she wasn't messaging him or, or mean, emailing him or calling him. So then I guess he was in his feelings talking about, oh, if you if you don't want to be here, you don't got to be here. So then she don't like that. And then that's when he made mention of, you know, probably because of his mom. He, his mom already neglected him. So that's why he kind of like was like, fine, if she don't want to be here. I'm not going to force her to be here because my mom wasn't here. So then that upset her. So then that's when, you know, she asked if roles were reversed, would you hold me down if she was behind bars? And he was honest. He said, I don't know. So that hurt Yandy. And in the confessional, she was just like, you know, that that hurts her feelings. Like that he doesn't know if he would hold her down. But like in a heartbeat, she would hold him down. And I can understand where she would be upset with that because a lot of females are willing to do the absolute most for men. And I feel like men would not reciprocate what females do for men. Because there's so many, once again, there's so many situations, there's so many people I see, so many females I see, you know, sacrifice everything for their men. Everything. And, and still, their men treat them like shit. So that already automatically tells me, oh, okay, so if if roles were reversed, you wouldn't do half the stuff your female did for you. And and that's, I don't know if that's just a men and female thing, but it is messed up. I can understand why that would be hurtful. So, you know, she's crying in the confessional and crying, you know, in person women DCs about that. And I think that's... um pretty much where it ends um and i'm pretty sure like i said next week we'll get to delicious and raymond um but once again i just feel like y'all need to talk like mendici says i don't know like maybe when you guys are off camera or whatever the case is maybe you need to ask him why does he feel like why does he feel that way why does he feel like he can't just say yes because he said he doesn't know what he would do. I feel like he would be a papoose and hold it down uh, for Yandy like papoose hold it, held it down for Remy. But, you know, like, you know, so I, I can understand. Like, I feel like guys are, 
so logical. They're just like, well, I'm not in that situation, so I can't answer that question right now. When it's just like, really, nigga? Like, <laughs> but, you know, I guess they rather be honest, which is like, I can't fault them for that. But at the same time, like I said, the females are so more willing to help a guy than a guy is willing to help them help a female i guess it depends and everybody's different so i can't really say all female or all men but just from what i've seen i feel i feel like feeling opinion not a fact that a female is willing to hold her down hold down a guy more than a guy is willing to hold down a girl so that was this week's episode i'm surprised i was able to do it all over again have the energy to do the video all over again um video's already at 40 minutes so thank you for watching we'll see what happens next week we'll see what happens this season and that's all folks so until next week <laughs> bye